In this video, I'm going to be reviewing this portable power station. It is the model PPS2000 that is made by Energizer. So if you're wondering what is a portable power station, the simple answer is it's just a big battery and a power inverter all together in one box. It's kind of like a generator that doesn't use any fuel or produce any emissions when it's being used. This power station has both AC and DC outlets on it, so it will run everything from home appliances to tools, USB devices, it even has a couple of 12 volt ports on it, and located here on top, there's a couple of wireless chargers, so if your cell phone or tablet has wireless charging capability, this will charge those too. And if you decide you want to purchase one of these power stations, be sure and check out the links that I have down in the description of the video. Because as of right now, this power station is only available on the Energizer webpage. And while you're there, be sure and use the discount code MAKINGSTUFF to save $200 off the purchase price of one of these units. But don't wait too long because the discount code is only available for a limited time. I also want to point out that this is a pre-production model and it was sent to me to review, but I am not being paid for this review. So that means this review is 100% my honest opinion. The PPS 2000 weighs in at about 68 pounds and it's really not all that hard for me to lift because of the two integrated grab handles. And also you can see it easily fits underneath the tonneau cover of a pickup truck. So let's take a closer look at the front of the power station and you can see right here at the bottom there are six AC outlets. There are also four regular USB outlets. There is one USB-C. There's also a couple of 12 volt outlets right here as well as a 12 volt 30 amp outlet right here. And also don't forget the two 15 watt wireless chargers that are located on top of the power station. It has a capacity of 2,150 watt hours and a pure sine wave output rated at 2,100 watts. So technically you can plug in 17 devices all at once just as long as the output doesn't exceed 2100 watts. So let's turn the power station around on its side and take a closer look and you can see there are two inputs. This is for recharging the power station. This aviation connector has a built-in MPPT controller which will allow you to charge it with solar panels or you can plug it into the 12 volt cigarette lighter of your car or truck. And this one will allow you to use the included power brick, which plugs into any 120 volt AC outlet. Now don't worry, this unit does come with all the cables you need to get it recharged. The heart of the PPS 2000 is the lithium phosphate batteries. That means that they may weigh just a little bit more, but you will get a much longer lifespan out of these batteries. They are rated at over 2000 charge cycles with a 10 year battery life. And to help protect those batteries, there's a built-in battery management system, which protects against overcurrent, overcharge, over voltage, over discharge, high temperatures, and short circuit protection. The Energizer PPS 2000 also has an integrated touchscreen, which makes operation of this power station extremely simple. The screen has many features such as real-time monitoring of power consumption, temperature, voltages, and charge status. It even has an indicator showing how much charge is left in the batteries. So at this point, you may be wondering, what's the advantage of having a power station like this one? Well, unlike a generator, it doesn't require any fuel to operate. So that means you don't need any propane or gasoline to make it work. It also doesn't produce any emissions, so you don't have to worry about things like carbon monoxide poisoning. And since it doesn't create any emissions, it can also be used indoors. It doesn't even make any noise unless one of the cooling fans comes on. So that's the basic rundown of this power station. I've got this one charged to 100%, so let's plug some stuff into it and see how well it works. All right, so I thought it'd be fun to start out by powering something that no workshop seems to have a shortage of, and that is batteries that need to be charged. I wanted to put as many devices plugged into this thing as possible at one time, 
And as you can see here, I have got all of the AC outlets filled and I have four of the USB outlets filled. I couldn't find anything that works off of 12 volt and I don't own any devices that can be wirelessly charged. So what I do have going here are two of the older style 18 volt DeWalt batteries. I've got a 12 volt Harbor Freight Hercules, 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 Hercules. a Black & Decker lithium 40 volt battery. I've got two of the newer style DeWalt 20 volt lithium batteries. And then over here, plugged into the USB, I've got four batteries. These are used for the fill lights when I'm making videos such as this one. And then last but not least, I've got my Bluetooth speaker. So to get things started, I need to power on the power station. And this is where the integrated screen comes into play. Because as you can see here, the DC outlets are turned off as well as the AC outlets. And if you look under the load, DC load reads zero watts, as well as the AC load. So to turn these devices on, I will just simply touch the touch screen, turn on the DC output, and you can see the devices come on, and I am pulling about 29 watts of power on the DC side, and I will do the same for AC. All of the chargers come on and you can see it's maxed out here at about 510 watts. So all together I am pulling about 540 watts of power out of the power station. So as you can see here I am indoors. All of my chargers have power applied to them. The power station is running. There is no noise and there certainly isn't any emissions. So I think what I'm going to do is just let this run for a while and let it charge all of my batteries. Okay, so I let this run for about a couple of hours and it charged all the batteries. And you can see here that it used about 10% of the battery in the power station. So now that I know I can charge all of my batteries in the event of a power failure or if I have to work off grid, I want to try something a little bit bigger. So I have plugged in my DeWalt circular saw into the power station and I want to see if I can cut some 2x4s with it. So no issues there, the power station supplied more than enough power for the circular saw to cut some 2x4s. And I did go back and look at the footage while I was making the cut and the circular saw pulled between 1000 and 1100 watts. Okay, so let's try something that takes a little bit more power like this heat gun. You can see right here that it is rated at 1600 watts. So this power station should have no problem powering the heat gun. I'm going to start out by turning it on in its lowest setting. And as you can see here, it is pulling just a little bit less than 900 watts. So now let's crank this thing up to full blast and see how well it works. So with the heat gun running at full power, you can see that it is pulling 1700 watts from the power station and it is handling this with no issues at all. All right, so I want to try something a little bit larger. So I have moved over to the other side of the shop where I keep my Craftsman 10 inch table saw. Let's see how well the power station will run the table saw. And we have an issue. I don't know if you can hear that, but the power station is beeping. So let's head over here and see exactly what the problem is. Okay, so the power station is sitting here beeping at me. And as you can see, the alarm button is illuminated. So let's press the alarm button and see what the problem is. And it says inverter low voltage. So I guess the table saw just pulls too much power from the power station for it to be able to power the table saw. So the power station triggered an alarm. It started beeping. It turned off the inverter and that's where that built-in protection came into play and it protected the inverter and also the table saw. So another popular use for these power stations is RVing and camping. So let's head outside to my travel trailer and try powering some devices out there. Okay, so I've moved out here into the trailer 
And I'm just gonna start out by saying that I am not even going to attempt to run the air conditioner with this power station. But the one thing that I am curious about is the microwave, because Mrs. Making Stuff and I, when we're traveling, we like to stop along the way and eat, at, like at a rest area or a truck stop, and we can save some money that way. And up until now, we've been kind of limited on what we can fix because we've had no way to heat it. So I'm pretty curious to see how well the microwave will work with this power station. In case you're wondering how I'm going to power this microwave by itself, with the power station, at first glance, it looks like the microwave is hardwired into this cabinet, but it really isn't. If I open this door right here, you can see this cord is the cord for the microwave. So I'm going to unplug this from the trailer, plug it into the power station, and that's how I am going to run the microwave. And as you can see, I've got the microwave plugged into the power station. I've got a cup of water here, and I am just going to set this for one minute, and let's see how well it works. Okay, so I let that run for one minute, and it worked perfectly fine. There were no issues. The microwave pulled about 1,500 watts of power from the power station, so that means on a full charge, that you could roughly run a microwave like this one for about an hour and a half on a full charge of battery. Okay, for one last final test, I have moved the power station outside and I am curious. As you can see, I have the entire trailer plugged into this power station. Let's see how well it will work. And right now you can see it is pulling 378 watts. And the only thing that's on in the trailer is the refrigerator is turned on and the lead acid batteries are charging. Everything else is just sitting in an idle state. So with those two things running, it is pulling 378 watts. Okay, so that shocked me that having the trailer, the entire trailer plugged into that power station, that it's only pulling 400 watts. So I've gone back inside and I know I said when I first got out here, I wasn't going to try this, but I'm here in the bedroom this air conditioner is a little bit smaller. It's 13,000 BTUs. Let's see if it will work. Okay, first I'm going to turn it on to low fan. And that works. Now let's try on low cool. And I don't believe it, it is actually working. I can hear the compressor running. It is actually working on low cool. Let's go outside and look at the meter on the power station. Okay, so I'm back outside and you can see that it is pulling about 1500 watts, just a hair under 1500. And I've got my kilowatt here. It's showing 119.673. So the voltage is good. And just to prove that it is running, you can see the entire trailer is plugged into this power station and it is running that air conditioner. Okay, so I'm kind of surprised. It is actually running the 13,000 BTU air conditioner. Now it is 72 degrees outside. It may be a little bit different on a hot July or August day, but right now it is only pulling 1500 watts. So yes, it does run this air conditioner, but at 1500 watts, it's only gonna run it for about an hour and a half. So the power station did a pretty decent job out there with the RV, so now let's talk about recharging it. All right, so I've got the power station sitting out here on the front seat of my truck, and I'm using the included cords, and I'm gonna use this cigarette lighter adapter, and I'm going to see how well it will charge the power station. Okay, and you can see here that it is charging at a whopping 46 watts, so that means if this power station was fully discharged to go from zero to 100%, it would take about two days with the cigarette lighter in my car. So the cigarette lighter, yeah, it's gonna take a little bit longer than what I like to try and charge this. So I think I'm gonna try the power brick. You can see here that I have run this down to 0% on the battery. The screen still works, go figure, but it's on 0%. 
So let's plug the power brick into this and see exactly how long it takes to charge this from zero to 100%. As you can see here, I have got the power brick plugged into the power station and it is charging at a rate of about 444 watts. Let's see how long it takes to get this back up to 100%. So the power station is now fully charged and it took exactly four hours and 45 minutes to do so. So that's my review of the Energizer PPS 2000. If you decide you want to pick one of these up for yourself, be sure and check out the links that I have down in the description of the video. And remember to use that discount code making stuff to save $200 off the purchase price of one of these units. But don't wait too long because that discount code is only available for a limited time. I hope you liked the video. If you did, please smash that like button and give me a big thumbs up. And if you aren't a subscriber, please consider hitting that subscribe button and ringing that bell so you don't miss any upcoming Making Stuff videos. And thanks for watching.